Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, here with some thoughts on this weekend's big fight between Brandon Rios and Urbano and Pillion. Now, before I go further, just remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Let's cut to the chase. I'm not buying all of this hype about Brandon Rios. I don't understand this line that has Rios heavily favored in this fight. I personally feel that the fight is a coin flip. Um, whenever there's a coin flip fight, and whenever you see two guys, and one of them has very little defense. He has a high guard. He just doesn't have the reflexes to do much with it. And that's Brandos Rios. Uh, that's Brandon Rios. When you see a guy with very little defense fighting a guy who has a vulnerability to uppercuts, and that's Obano Antillian, right? A guy who... Um, you know, has a high guard, has some defense, but gets hit with uppercuts, look at the Soto fight, then in my opinion, this is a shootout. Somebody is going to get knocked out. Now, um, an online sports book, which will go nameless, actually had broken this fight out. Uh, last night, this book was actually offering both guys by knockout as well as both guys by decision and other props I noticed that they wisely pulled those props off the board because I believe that boxing fans gamblers knew that they were gonna get great odds if they took both guys by KO so now what you're left with is an over under of nine and a half rounds at a minus 200 and uh, you're left with just uh, props to take Brandon Rios at minus 600 and Antillion at plus 400. Let me just say, I like that under 9.5 uh, at minus 200. Not only that, whenever you have two fighters who are evenly matched, in my opinion, I understand Rios has the slightly bigger body, even though they're fighting at the same weight class. But, um, when you see two guys who are evenly matched and it's a shootout where either guy can get knocked out I believe you owe it to yourself to take the leverage that the casino is giving you so I like the under nine and a half rounds straddled against I don't know if this guy wins the fight I'm not saying he wins the fight I'm just saying this is an evenly matched coin flip fight and if the casino is gonna give me plus 400 odds at least that's what I saw this morning on Urbano Antillian 4 to 1 on Antillian where I could include him in a straddle at under nine and a half rounds I've got to take that the logic is simply either guy can win the fight if either wins by KO before the midway point of the tenth round you win on the under right you're just gonna have a little kicker out there at four to one for Antillion so if he's the guy who wins by KO in the first nine and a half rounds of this fight then you win on both sides of the bet and you get exposure to a plus 400 all I can say is this about Brandon Rios and I understand Rios wants to fight Victor Ortiz who apparently he knew years ago and I understand he has a hot trainer in Robert Garcia who I think is a great trainer. Let me just say first, um, Rios in my opinion would not stand a chance against Victor Ortiz. They're two different fighters. Uh, Ortiz who's fighting Floyd Mayweather next um, comes in at angles. He doesn't stand right in front of you. right? Ortiz also when he wants and it's not all the time can literally have some defense. So Ortiz was able to go 12 rounds against Andre Berto, a fight in which he beat Berto and won the title. Right? Ortiz, more athletic than Brandon Rios, more versatile. Ortiz was able to outbox and get a decision uh, against Nate Campbell. 
I don't think Brandon Rios is that level of fighter. I think with Rios, he has to run you over to win the fight. He has to overpower you. He can't outbox the Nate Campbell over, you know, the length of a fight. Rather, Rios has to stand in front of you, throw bombs, and try to take you out. And what typically happens in a Rios fight, and Rios is unbeaten, is that um, when he's fighting someone like Anthony Peterson, Peterson had the uh, much more advanced boxing skills, but just couldn't take the pressure, couldn't take the intensity, couldn't take Rios's power, eventually got overpowered, right? That's the pattern in Rios' fights. But make no mistake, even though Rios won that fight, if you look at the film of that fight, you'll see he wasn't the most skilled man in the ring, nor was he the most skilled man in the ring against Miguel Acosta. Acosta, quite frankly, was schooling him early. It looked like he was on his way to an easy win, and then Rios just grinded him down, wore him down before getting the stoppage. I personally believe that these workmen like uh, grinders, like Rios, who you know, aren't that blessed with spectacular hand speed, aren't that blessed with great balance, uh, are pretty predictable. In other words, I think all of us know right now we're not going to see Rio showing a lot of foot movement in the fight. It's going to be a here I am, I'm here to take you out, you know, let's fight, let's see who's the baddest man in the ring. These baddest men, in my opinion, have caps on their career. You know, um, they, at the championship level, are going to run into guys like Victor Ortiz, who, you know, uh, fights at 147 these days. But they're going to run into guys who have big punches, right, ha have tough attitudes, but also have skills, right? If, if you're just a big guy with a lot of aggression and a punch, Sooner or later, you're going to run into a guy who knows how to roll with punches and who knows how to defend against your onslaught and who knows how to move laterally to keep you off balance. So uh, Brandon Rios, for all the hype, you know, maybe Rios eventually gets a title and, you know, has his moment in the sun, but Rios' style is not the style, in my opinion that lends itself to longevity. Let's just call it as it is. And in this fight, I think the public is overvaluing Brandon Rios. I believe they're undervaluing Urbano and Tillian. Understand, in my opinion, Umberto Soto, the lightweight champ who's now moving up to 140, is one of the best fighters pound for pound in the sport. And Antillian fought him razor close fight that's a great fight take a look on YouTube and in my opinion Umberto Soto is a much more skilled I mean, I mean I'm talking about a completely different reference frame in terms of skill over Brandon Rios right um, in that fight Soto who can take you out coming forward he can fight an Antonio Margarito style but Soto realized that at a certain point, he couldn't do that against Antillian. So he had to take a step back. And the reason why Soto is a great fighter is he can take a step back. He's also adaptive reactive. So during the fight, he figured out that he could hit Antillian with uppercuts. The uppercuts made the difference, in my opinion, in the fight. Now, Rios does throw a great uppercut here, but he's a pattern fighter. And in my opinion, there's going to be less of an element of surprise in his uppercut as there was in Soto's uppercut, right? Soto's like Marquez, Juan Manuel Marquez was against Juan Diaz, right? Figures out he can throw the uppercut, doesn't telegraph it, is able to hang outside, then he comes in with an uppercut attack, sneak uppercuts. I don't think Brandon Rios is that smooth. So the bet I'm recommending here is don't take Rios. Take the under nine and a half. Either guy could get the knockout 
if you get the knockout in under nine and a half, you not only win, but if you're a Rio supporter, understand you're getting significantly better odds than if you just take Rios, right? Rios is a minus 600, according to an online sports book. Minus 600. You take the under nine and a half, you're getting a minus 200. So if Rios gets the knockout in under nine and a half, you're getting three times the return you would get at minus 600. Let's go further. Because the fight, in my opinion, is a coin flip. If Antillian gets the knockout in nine and a half or less, you're covered by the under nine and a half. And so if you're a Rio supporter, you'll be standing in line, ready to collect after the fight, thinking, wow, I'm surprised about this. Thank goodness I took the under. Let's take it one step further. And keep in mind, with value betting, you could be a Rio supporter. You're just trying to take outrageous offers the casino's giving you. What I want you to do is to look long and hard at that Antillian simply to win bet at plus 400. That's an outrageous line, right? A plus 400 is a bet where the casino is claiming that if these guys fought five times, that Brandon Rios would win four of them, right? That's a definition of a four to one shot, right? You know, four times the favorite wins, the fifth time the underdog would win. I think that's ridiculous. I think this is a coin flip fight. I think if these guys fought ten times, and Tillian, in my opinion, wins five of them. So um, even if you're a Rio supporter, if I were you, I would take the under nine and a half rounds. I do not see this fight going the distance. Both guys like to come forward. Neither guy likes to go backwards. If one of these guys goes backwards, they're going to be psychologically broken, right? They'll get knocked out if they start going backwards trying to pretend that, you know, they're, you know, a, a great defensive fighter. So um, I think that even Rio supporters, in addition to taking the under nine and a half, right, the money you save in betting on a minus 200 instead of a minus 600, throw that money on Antillian to win at four to one odds. The straddle I'm recommending is the under nine and a half rounds straddled against Antillian at four to one odds. I'm not saying Antillian wins the fight. I'm just saying when it's a coin flip fight and both guys have an equal chance of winning the fight, I think you have to throw at least a few dollars, just a kicker as part of your bet portfolio on the underdog when they're giving you four to one odds. That's outrageous. Let me know what you think. Leave your comments for me here on YouTube. Visit us at Gambler's Advisory. I hope you score the fight as it happens on my channel page here, youtube.com slash DWYER70905. And win, lose, or draw, all I ask is that after the fight, you stop by and leave some post-fight comments. Thanks for watching.